Well, first of all, let's start with today's decision. Not an easy one. The day it becomes easy to terminate an employee is the day I need to find another job. Some cases may be more clear cut than others, but it's, uh, it's never an, an easy decision. Um, when you learned about this latest incident, um, take me back to that moment. What went through your mind? Well, first I was just notified that we had a shooting that involved an officer. As in, I, I do with all those cases, I responded to the scene to make sure I could get all the information I needed as quickly as I possibly could. Uh, first thing I'll usually ask, is everyone okay? Uh, is anyone in critical condition? Is everyone going to survive? Who was shot? Things like that, just to make sure everyone's okay. Once I get that out of the way, then we start trying to get as much into the evidence as we can. And oftentimes it takes time. I can't get all the answers I want right away, but I get the answers that I can. And then through the investigative process, we develop the rest of those answers. Um, in cases like this, Chief, there's always some takeaways. What, what's to learn from this? That's a really good question. Uh, I think whatever we do, we need to try to learn from it. So whatever it is, we can always do better. Um, this case specifically, I, I don't know what takeaways we have. I don't know what takeaways we have to learn from it because we had a situation where things weren't done the way that we would expect a Fort Worth officer to conduct himself on duty or off duty. Uh, we always try to make sure, uh, even if it's a great situation, say everything was ideal, well, let's make it better next time. Obviously this wasn't ideal. So the way that we can learn from this is as we dived into the investigation, as we're able to find out the information we could, find out if there's anything that needs to change on our end. Is there a policy that needs to change? Is there training that needs to change? What can we do to make sure incidents that we don't want to see happen never happen again? I looked at his training from you know the very beginning up until some of the latest classes that he had taken. And I was trying to figure out how could he put himself in the situation based just on the training that he's had. Extensive training when it comes to the community and how to treat people and scenarios. Your thoughts? My thoughts are what I saw from this uh, incident definitely was not in line with the training we provide. It definitely was not in line with the policies that we have in place that officers are also trained on. What I saw was this was something that should not have happened based on the training and the policies that we have in place. Let's talk about on duty, off duty, when you're a police officer. What does that mean? What does that mean to people at home? I think for most people, when they see someone is a police officer, the designation of on duty, duty or off duty doesn't matter. They see a police officer. And specifically with us, they see a Fort Worth police officer. I understand that perspective from the community, but what I want the community to understand is we also have policies that dictate the conduct that is acceptable on duty and the conduct that is acceptable off duty. Police officers are held to a higher standard, and it may not be fair, but it's the way it is. And quite frankly, given the authority that we have when we wear this uniform, this badge, this patch, we need to be held to a higher standard. And because of that, when we have situations like this occur, we've got to do everything we can to make sure we're holding ourselves accountable and taking the right action. I talked to some of the ministers that you met with today. Chief uh, brought a band of clergy together, as he often does, to uh, give us um, a kind of a head start on what's going on in the city. So today he brought us down to, before he made the news release regarding Officer William Martin. Why are you engaging the community the way that you are? What does that mean to you? And what do you want people in our community to know about your efforts in doing that? The, the history of policing really shows a lack of communication with the community. Oftentimes it'd be um, nothing to see here, folks. We've got this. Or if there was an incident, you might get an answer months or even years down the road. And sometimes because of the investigative process, it takes a little bit longer. We've got to be able to get out what we can when we can. And it's not just talking to our media partners like you, Scoop, but it's actually talking, meeting with our community members. And if we're, if we're always expecting them to come to us, if we're always expecting them to ask us first, 
then we're really losing part of the benefit of that relationship. We've got to be more proactive as police, as a profession, about initiating the engagement, about inviting them into our own, our own home or, or even going to theirs to have conversations. And it's critical to be able to answer the questions that they have, to be able to give them the information that we're able to at that point. And by bringing in some of those formal and informal leaders in the community, we can sit around and have hard conversations. And Scoop, sometimes those conversations are very hard. Sometimes it's talking about things that aren't pleasant. I've got to hear those things. I've got to have them know that I'm going to listen to what they have to say, whether it's something positive, something negative, whether it's a compliment or it's criticism. I want to hear that because I believe that helps make us better and I know it makes our relationship with the community better. As chief, are you concerned about situations like this, the Jackie Craig situation, the road rage shooting, giving your department a black eye? You know what, I, I'm always concerned when anything happens anywhere in the country when it comes to uh, police interaction that's seen as negative because we often all get painted with the same broad brush no matter where it happens. But when it's close to home like this, when it's our department, that definitely uh, affects us in a negative way. And what, what bothers me the most is the other officers that are out there every single day that are doing the job like champs. I mean, they, they come in because they want to serve, they want to make the community the best that it possibly can be. They're literally willing to sacrifice their own lives if they have to, to ensure we're protecting the vulnerable from harm, we're providing quality service, we're protecting the peace, we're protecting life, we're protecting property. We could have millions of interactions like that that go well, but unfortunately only one, just one, can start to erode the year's worth of work that's been done. So the thing that bothers me the most is the negative impact this could have on the relationship we have with the community and the perception of the officers. We have so many good people doing so many good things every single day. Um, so the people at home will know this is an off-duty officer. What should have happened in this situation? I don't want to go too much into the details. There still is a criminal investigation that's going on. I definitely don't want to say anything to affect what happens criminally. There are ways for things to be handled safely, uh, by the law, by policy, and in my opinion, that's not what happened here according to our, our policies and our requirements administratively. Uh, there could have been a lot better decisions made. Is there anything you have to say to the gentleman that was shot at all? What would be your message to him? You know, this was a traumatic situation for a lot of people, including for him. I'm very aware of that. What I'm hoping that he sees through this process, through the criminal charges that were uh, brought against this officer, through the way he was held accountable administratively, I hope he sees that we're going to be transparent, that we're going to be open, and we're going to definitely hold ourselves accountable and continue to hold ourselves to a very high standard. Yeah, you weren't chief when the Jackie Craig situation happened, but today, if you were sitting in the room with Jackie Craig's family, rest her soul. What would you say to her family? I'm sorry. This was a forward police officer. This is not representative of everyone in our department, but he was wearing a badge much like this one, patch like this, and to a lot of people that's all they see. They, they don't see the face, they don't see the person, and that's not knocking the public's perception even. They see an authority figure. They see a police officer. And I'd say I'm sorry because that person, uh, to them, in some ways, represented the entire department. And I would hope they know that's not necessarily the case. The ministers told me today that they appreciate you because you're changing the culture between police and the community. One of the things we've always said was give this chief an opportunity to change the culture of the department. And he's proven to our community, to our village, that he's willing to do that. That's not an easy job. I hope they know how much I appreciate them because it is a team effort. It's not anything that any of us, including me, could ever do on our own. It's something that requires everyone. It requires every team member in the Forward PD family that comes and shows by every interaction that the community can trust us, that we want to have that relationship with them. Every interaction is a chance to change the narrative, and we have officers doing that every single day. 
finding ways to engage with the community in a non-law enforcement way just to connect as human beings. And culture takes time. You, you can't turn a ship immediately. What I will say is uh, Chief Krause, prior to me, was doing a great job with the way he was engaging with the community. And we have a history of community engagement with chiefs and officers for decades. What I'm seeing now with officers is they want to be engaged. They want to be a part of the community, not just because it's their job and they're assigned there, but because they care about the people who live in those communities. What do you say to your new recruits? Is there something that you say to all new recruits, especially so that, I don't know, you're not sitting doing an interview about them? One of the things I say to every, every group, either in the graduation ceremony or when meeting with them at the academy, everybody wants to know what the chief expects of them. And I tell them I expect their best. And I expect it every single day. Now, I know not everybody has 100% every day. Sometimes we're tired. Sometimes we've got things going on that are maybe bringing us down a little bit. But I expect 100% of what they got. And I expect if they're not okay, that they step up and say they're not okay. And we do whatever we can to help them out. We do whatever we can to give them some time off if they need it. But I want them to know it's not just when the chief's around. It's not just when a supervisor or a sergeant is watching. I expect their best every single day. Uh, after this happened, this latest road rage shooting happened, there were people who were upset that the officer was um, pulled off the street but still getting paid. A lot of the community confused why. Um, can you break that down for us? Absolutely. There's different processes along any administrative in uh, investigation process where we have to follow certain rules, certain policies, certain procedures that have been put in place. And there is one that specifically says if an officer has been indicted or charged in a criminal complaint for a misdemeanor, then we can cut off the money. Then they can be suspended without pay, but until that happens, we're not able to. That had not happened. Yes, he was arrested. Yes, he was booked in on the charge, but there is no indictment yet on that charge. So according to the law, I was not able to do it until that happened. There was at one point, you, you did take away his police power. Yes, sir. Can you break that down? What yes, that, that was rest called restricted duty. And if we have a situation where an officer is under investigation for certain allegations or for criminal allegations, quite frankly, if someone does something and I don't feel comfortable having them out there with a badge and a gun, the first thing we can do is restrict their police authority, take their badge and gun, so the process can play out the way it needs to. We have to follow due process policies and practices. But that doesn't mean I have to give them a gun and a badge and send them out in the community. If someone is sitting at home with their family talking about the Fort Worth Police Department, what do you want that conversation to be? I want it to be honest. I want it to be an honest conversation and I want to hear about it. Because there are a lot of people who love the Fort Worth Police Department. For a city our size, you look across the country, I dare you to find a city where there is more support for the police department than we have in, Fort, in Fort Worth, Texas. But I'm not naive. I know we're not 100% across the board fans, uh, or th everyone's not fans of us 100% across the board. I know we have some people in the community who still don't trust police in general. I know there are some people in the community that specifically don't trust the Fort Worth Police Department. I know there are people who have questions about what we do and why we do it. Even though we have the support of the majority of the community, and that is very important, the other side of the coin, that's just as important. We have to make sure we're engaging with those families. We have to make sure we're engaging with those communities. I hope the conversations we're having at home about the Fort Worth Police Department are honest and they're open, open-minded. I hope they will look at the good work that we're doing, that we are holding ourselves accountable, and say, you know what, the Fort Worth Police Department's not perfect. Any organization made up of human beings will not be perfect, and never will. But every day, we strive to get better and better and earn that trust of that family sitting at home talking about the Fort Worth Police Department. Lastly, after the road rage shooting, did you go to the scene, and if so, why? I did go to the scene. Why did you do that, Chief? Anytime we have an incident where an officer has discharged their weapon, I want to be on scene. One, it's important to the community. It's important to our city leaders. It's important to our department. It's important to me personally. The last thing any officer wants to do is have to use any kind of deadly force for any reason. But sometimes we have to. Our jobs are dangerous. And sometimes we have to use force to protect ourselves and other innocent parties. This is, it's a big deal when a weapon is discharged. 
I think it's important for, for me to be there for a few reasons. Again, one, to check on the condition of everyone involved, to get the information that I can about what has happened so I'll be able to present that to the community. But it's also a chance to connect with officers in the community. It's a chance for me to go around and talk to officers, check on them, make sure that if they're not okay, that we provide them all the resources they need. And there will be community members oftentimes that will gather outside of the crime scene and I'll have questions. I may not have all the answers, but it gives me a chance to engage with them as well. I spend a lot of time in meetings. I spend a lot of time in my office, but any time I have where I can get back out there in our neighborhoods, in the community, with my officers, with my community, it's a plus, even if it's under less than desirable conditions.